Hi everybody, welcome to your daily dose. My name is Lauren and I'm part of the visitor engagement team here at the Calgary Zoo. This week we are celebrating all of the amazing bears that live on our planet. We have multiple species of bear here at the Calgary Zoo. Today I am down at the black bear habitat with Teslin, Orson and Manuka, our resident black bears. When people come visit us, they look in this habitat and they go, hang on a second, that bear's not black, it's brown. Or that one's golden color. Here's the cool thing. No matter what color they are, they're a black bear. Black bears actually come in cinnamon, rust, white, brown, black, golden, and all the colors in between. But they are all American black bears. Now, there are actually eight species of bear alive today on our planet, and there are many more that are extinct. In your daily dose at home, my colleague Jen is gonna talk a little bit about those prehistoric bears that appeared and lived on our planet millions of years ago and how big they were. But today, I'm gonna to talk a little bit about the bears that are alive and where they live. First of all, there are three species that live here in Canada that we're pretty familiar with. We have black bears, like the ones behind me, grizzly bears, which are a subspecies of brown bear, and polar bears, that's this one here. I brought some biofacts to help us see some of the differences between these different species. There are also bears we're more familiar with, like giant pandas, and then there are some fun friends that we're gonna get to in a minute that you might not have heard of. Bears live in all parts of mostly the Northern Hemisphere. There's one species that lives in the Southern Hemisphere and one that lives kind of along the equator. But we don't see any bears in Africa, Australia, or Antarctica, but they're found pretty much everywhere else. What is a bear? Let's start there. Bears are a mammal, that means they have fur and they lactate or produce milk for their babies. They are in the order Carnivora, which means they are related to other carnivores like the dog family, like wolves, the cat family, like lions and tigers, the weasel family, the red panda family, some of those other families that we've already talked a little bit about on some daily doses at home. They are usually fairly large. Uh, they go anywhere from about a 70 to 170 pound animal up to about 1,500 pounds. Who is 1,500 pounds? If you guess polar bear, you're right. Polar bears are the largest on our planet and they live primarily in the cold north polar regions. You don't see them in Antarctica. If you've ever seen a polar bear and a penguin, they don't live in the same places. I'm gonna dispute that once and for all. The smallest bear is somebody you might not have been as familiar with. This is the skull here of a sun bear, and they go from about 70 to 170 pounds. Sun bears live in uh, the tropical parts of Southeast Asia, and they have an adorable coloration. They have a honey color on their chest, uh, and they're the smallest species. So when we look and compare these two skulls, we can see a really, really big difference in size. These two are also a super great example of the different types of climates that bears can live in. Polar bears live in exclusively cold sea ice uh, habitats. They are all white to blend in with their surroundings. Where sun bears, they have very, very thin coats because they live in such a tropical area and they eat a very different kind of diet. They eat things like insects and lots of fruits. Polar bears are actually the only bear species that's a true carnivore. They still have uh, a carnassial tooth, that's that sharp shearing tooth, and their diet is entirely meat. Most other bear species are omnivores. That means they eat meat and plants, but most bears, about 80 to 90% of their diet is plants. And then the last one, the giant panda, they're the only true herbivore. When we look at these skulls, we can see some of the differences that tell us what that animal eats. So when we look at our giant panda skull here, one of the biggest differences that you'll notice between this one and the other skulls is this ridge here. It's called a sagittal crest, and if you feel the top of your head, you'll feel that you don't have one. And that's because the foods you eat aren't very hard. Pandas actually have a really strong sagittal crest because they have super powerful jaw muscles to be able to break bamboo. So they're the only one of our bear species that has that really, really tall crest. On our polar bear skull, I'll pull that back here for a moment, we can see we still have a bit of a sagittal crest, but it's not as pronounced because uh, it doesn't have quite as strong of a bite. 
When we look at some of our other bear skulls, go back to our sun bear, you'll see it's very, very small. Who else do we have? Well, one of my favorites is from South America, and this is the skull of a spectacled bear. And they're named because they look, their spot pattern looks like they're wearing glasses. So they are found in the Andes. They're also called an Andean black bear. There's another black bear. This one is an Asiatic black bear, which is found much throughout China uh, and sort of central parts of Asia. It looks a lot like the black bears behind me, but it's a lot fluffier. And then the last one that I have here is the sloth bear. The sloth bear is from India. Uh, so they're actually the bear species, if you've ever seen them photographed with a tiger, they live in the same space, which I think is really cool. So these bears, they're from all over the world. They eat all kinds of different uh, fruits and vegetables, but they share one thing in common. They need healthy forests. Uh, just like the bears that live here in Canada, bears share their need for healthy forest ecosystems in order to survive. So they're actually one of the best animals that we can help protect. When we're in our mountain parks, we can do things like leave no trace behind us and make sure that we are practicing bear safety when we're uh, out and about once we're able to go back to the mountains. We can also make sure that we're sourcing sustainable paper products, which is really important. I think I talked a little bit when we when met our tigers about the Forest Stewardship Council and how important it is to source sustainable paper products. And that helps all eight of our bear species. Isn't that cool? Thank you so much for watching today's Daily Dose. Make sure you watch the Daily Dose at home to learn a little bit more about the prehistoric bears that roamed our planet millions of years ago and then check on today's daily activity. Thank you for watching and thank you for supporting wildlife conservation.